this video we're going to talk about how do you edit and work with poles in the line design mode. And it's actually exactly the same as you work with them in regular OCalc. So let's take a look at how things work. When I'm looking at my line design, I see an overhead view that shows me my individual poles. And if I zoom in far enough, I can actually see there's my cross arm, there's the ends of my dead end insulators, there's the actual pole itself. And I can do things like um, pick the pole, in which case that pole will become the one selected in my inventory view, and that will pole will become the one selected in my 3D view. And I can perform edit operations as I always would have in OCalc. Let's pick the cross arm, for example, and we'll change its elevation. We'll move it down a little bit. And you notice that what happened was the under the covers, these are individual PPLX files, but all of the spans from this pole to this pole and from this pole to this pole, and in reverse, all got simultaneously edited so that their geometries matched. And that same sort of thing is true all the way down the line, because the system now understands connectivity. And it understands connectivity literally all the way from one end of the line design to the other. So if I were to do something like edit this, it's going to give me the extra option that says, do you want to just edit this one span, or do you really want to edit everybody? And so if, for example, I've determined that my initial model had the wrong kind of wire on here, I can pop up my edit box, and I can say that it, in fact, is... Um, well, you know, I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to say that it's... I know it's not. It's obviously a primary, but if I say it's a secondary, only because in OCalc that would get... Uh, get displayed in a different color and I say okay you notice that all that span and all that span all the way down the line of the poles got changed to be the new thing that I said it was now I'm going to put it back because that's that's really not kosher to turn a primary into a secondary on a cross arm like that but if I did something less visually interesting like change the change the span diameter it would have changed now that leads to the question well obviously I can't change the span length that's controlled by the next span down so what happens if I do that well exactly what you think happens I change it to to two feet let's say and I say okay and then I go back and edit it and it came right back to where it was it didn't care so rotation and length if you edit them, get unedited again automatically because the system understands that what you did for an un, um, unconnected span isn't the same thing as if you did the same operation for a connected span. So it saw it was connected and it, and it basically reverted to the correct value. But if, for example, I go to my master catalog and I let me pick something here like a cross arm. Where's my assemblies? Here's a cross arm has some spans on it. I take this cross arm, I put it on this pole, and I set its rotation You see it actually rotates exactly the way I expected because it's not connected to anybody. Now I can connect it. I can this is the way you would do a branching circuit. So I could go in here and I could say that I wanted to I can and I wanted to take off this span and this span right. like that. So now the system understands obviously I've got a free span going in that direction. I'm going to go back to my line design there. He in fact is. And I could then select that pole and I could say extend line it understands, since there's only one set of spans that could possibly be the, be the ones being connected, it knows what to do. I say OK. Then I say Terminate. I'm not going to do it go any further. Yes. And there we go. And just as easily as that, I made a branching circuit. And so these spans are all connected. If I do that same bogusy trick we did before, and I say for this entire circuit, convert that to something that causes the color to change. You see, they're connected, but they're not connected to anybody else unless I add jumpers, which I can do. I can add jumpers to jumper circuit A to circuit B through a switch or through electrical equipment if I wish to. So, 
that's how that's done. Now, because we've made a branching circuit, this is actually a good time to talk about the way that the um, polls uh, list is handled. Right? When I tell it to do things, it needs to know, for example, if I tell it to do an underbuild, it needs to know in what order I want it to do it and, it, and what poll is the next poll in line. So we'll do it the wrong way just to demonstrate what happens. Let's say I pick poll one. Whenever one I click over here also gets clicked over here, and then I pull, clo do five and six. Now I've just told it that poll one, poll five, and poll six are the precedence order in which I wish to perform the operation I'm about to perform. And what I'm going to do is a stringing operation. I'm going to go down to my uh, master catalog. I'm going to pick a single bolt with a what's it got on comms on there or cat v cable i'm going to say that's my stringing assembly and now i'm going to go under tools i'm going to say perform stringing i'm going to say perform stringing on the check poles okay well that didn't make any sense because what it did was exactly what i told it to do it did stringing from pole one to pole five to pole six let's go to the 3d view and take a look at what it did it did a pole stringing from pole one to pole five to pole six so that's important now we can go ahead and undo that edit undo um, it's important to understand therefore that things like displaying the profile view performing bulk edit operations performing batch report operations especially performing stringing are done in the order that the line uh, list says so if I was going to string this line it would make sense for me to check one two three four and not only that, it's going to go in that order. Let's say I did something silly like reverse these. I can just drag and drop and said one, two, three, four. Now in parentheses, it's telling you one, two, three, four. That's the, that's the sequential order. That's just a helper because in actuality, I've done one, two, four, three. Like, so again, we have our stringy assembly still selected. So let's, let's look at what happens if I do that. I go tools, other tool, um, Perform stringing, check poles, go ahead. It went ahead and did the stringing. Let's go look at the 3D view. It did exactly what I told it to do, which makes no sense. It went uh, 1, 2, 4, 3. And you can see, look, the stringing went past 3, down to 4, and then back again. So it's up to me to tell the system in what order, the, in what precedence order the poles are to be processed. And this is true for all, for almost all operations that are multipole operations. Um, here we'll do another thing, right? Let's say I'm going to display my profile view. So I'm going to go to view profile view. Well, it doesn't really understand what I'm trying to do. It just lays them out in order. So this is one two. Now it knows that the distance from two to four is fairly far, and they're not actually connected. So, except for that <laughs> underbuild we just added. So it did four, it laid it out with the right length, and then went back to three. But because it unwrapped it and did it uh, laterally, I get this weird looking uh, view. So it's very important to this concept to make sense. Let's go ahead and switch these back again. Now it's one, two, three, four. Now if I go view profile, you get the profile that you expect. Again, though, it's unhappy because <laughs> the spans don't make any sense. Yeah, you know, all it's saying as it lays them out is, do each span with the distance you told it to have, and then draw all the spans that go from pole one to pole two. Well, there is no pole, there is no span that went from pole two to pole three because we jumped straight to four. But that one wasn't the next one in order, so it doesn't know how to draw that profile view because it wouldn't really know that these laterally made sense. So, again, we're going to go ahead and undo that stringing operation that we did just so we don't mess things up too bad. <coughs> so that's the, that's how you, you do things with the, the poll sequencing view and the poll checkboxes. So we saw to do underbuild. All the rest of the edit operations are exactly what you'd expect they'd be. There, you select the poll you want to work with. You switch back to your 3D view. And you edit in OCalc the way you always edit in OCalc. I can calculate the results of that particular poll. It shows me whether there's remediation needed. In this case, the cross arms are overloaded. Um, 
let's it tells me the the um, GCU and MCU for that particular poll in that scenario. I can change which poll is my currently selected poll in a number of ways. I can click on the next poll down in the 3D view, in which case it becomes the selected one. It's now showing it to me in the inventory view. It's now, if I switch to the line design, highlighted in the line design view, it's highlighted in the poll sequence view, and everything down the line. Now, as you recall, we actually noted that we can look at things um, overhead, and they're pretty visually correct. So let's go ahead and say, right click on this insulator. I can do all the things I would normally do in the 3D view. I don't have to pick back. The same menu that pops up here when I click on that insulator is the same is the same insulator is the same menu that pops up here is the same menu that pops up here and so I can edit in any of my views but I'm editing the way you always did in OCalc I'm editing that individual thing um, but for example if I pick the cross arm I set its rotation you notice that it's rotating in the top view, it's rotating in the 3D view, it's rotating in the inventory view, it's rotating in my display in my data entry panel, and you know, so I can see it in any view that I wish to, and I can edit it in any view that I wish to. Um, similarly, if I take go back to my master catalog and I pick something like a transformer, and I put it on this pole. And I put it at the height selected. It gets added in the inventory view. It gets added in the line design view. And it gets added in the 3D view. So just like you can do things in the in the 3D view and the normal view, you can do things in the line design view. So basically you've just increased the amount of editing options you have. And that includes um, uh, things like up to and including substitution, right? I'm going to go to my poles, go to my wood poles, pick something like a 60-footer, ponderous pine, drag and drop that. If I drag on top of that pole, it understands, do I want to substitute exactly the same as it would have over here? Yes, I do. Do I want to keep things tip relative? Sure, why not? And everything jumped up. And so if I go to my 3D view, Bowl jumped up, all the spans adjusted, rotation stayed the same, everything stayed tip relative. It did the exact same operation it would always have done in OCalc if I had performed a pole substitution operation. So once you get down to editing individual poles, other than having a little bit more flexibility because you can do it in the overhead view as well as in the 3D view and the inventory view, it's exactly the same as you're used to with OCalc. There's no difference. And so all of the uh, skills that you've developed in using OCalc are totally transferable over to the line design system.